what we're going to use is I have this Red Heart brand of scrubby yarn. Uh, it's actually more like holiday colors. I was give, given, excuse me, a friend got it for me, and I haven't had a chance to go out and buy different colors of this yarn, but I think it could be really cool to add to my collection or to yours. And again, it's just the Red Heart um, scrubby yarn, and it's just got a little different texture if you've never felt this yarn. Like, threw me off a little bit. It's a little more texture. I'm hoping that you can kind of see what it looks like up close. And what is best is to pair this with a cotton yarn. So what I did is I paired it with the white cotton yarn that I already had from before. Again, just to match the colors since this is done with um, red, white, and green, I figured it would look best to use a white color. If I had, had green on hand for cotton yarn, I would have used that, or red, which is my favorite color, I would have used red. But we're going to put both of those strands together. And I already have my slip knot created over here since I figured everybody usually knows. And the way I did it is I'm going to do a, a drawstring cast on, which I like to use. And again, because we're using the Nifty Knitter, we can place the little extra strand on the outside. I'm just trying to get my yarns here. My there go. Those two go together. Oh, goodness. Does not usually fight me this much. Okay. And again, we're going to just do the drawstring cast on. If you haven't seen me already do this, it's a pretty simple process. We're just going to simply work our way back and forth between the pegs. When you get back to close to the beginning, you're going to, if you remember right, lay it in front of the other the pegs. And wherever there are two sets of yarn on there, again, we have our original wrap around, and then we have the one on top. You're just going to simply knit it over. And you're going to do that all the way around the loom. Don't hold it too tight. Just loosely lay it across and bring the bottom two up wherever there are. So there's nothing here, but there's one here. I can knit it over. Go As you get back to the start, you just got a few more here you got to do. Okay, and now you go ahead and push those down out of your way for the next part we're going to do. Okay, now for this part, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're just going to simply e-wrap it. This will just help a little easier when we go to bind it off. Remember with the drawstring bind off, later on we'll be pulling a string that will close it off. So again, we're going to go ahead and just do one row of e-wrap knit to lock this in again. Keep in mind of your tension. You don't want to be wrapping too tight. You want the yarn to feel like it's just easily going through your fingers. Now you can choose to wrap all the pegs and then go around and knit, or you can work one peg at a time, or a few pegs at a time, and then knit over as you're working the project. And it's important because this is a different type of yarn, that you make sure you're getting both strands of the yarn up and over the peg. Again, because the textures are different, you really are going to want to go in here, and you're really going to want to make sure you almost separate before you do it, and go ahead and knit over. Again, you're going to go and make sure you separate the yarn a little bit first. So you're grabbing those two bottom ones up and over. Again, when you're using two different texture yarns, it's important to really pay attention that you're grabbing it in the right spot and that you're not leaving anything behind.
Okay, we're getting close to the end of this row. Again, we're making sure we get both strands that are on the bottom up and over the top. Okay. And that completes our E-wrap row. Now the next row we're going to do, just because I want to add a little different, is we're going to do the purl stitch. It's great to kind of alternate knitting and purling sometimes. And this time we're going to, like I said, we're going to purl, which is a simple stitch. And again, later on we'll be removing this off of the peg once we've done a few more rows. And every, if you've seen me do that in another video. So again, with purling, you're just going to come over and we're going to go down through and then grab our working yarn, turn it until we create a loop, making sure you got both of the yarns, pull it off the peg, place it back on the peg. So now go ahead and go around to simply doing the purl stitch. Again, making sure because you're using two different yarns that you're grabbing both strands taking that new loop and putting it back on. Okay, we're now we're now back to the getting back to the beginning here. Last few pegs we need to do. So now we have completed our pearl row. From here, I want to do the rib stitch. Now, I want to point out, because this loom only has 31 pegs, we're going to end up with two knit stitches at the beginning. We're going to be beginning a row with a knit and ending a row with a knit, which will still be fine. It won't affect the look too much. You'll just end up having two knits together. Usually, if it's an even-numbered loom, you'll have a better like knit pro for the rib stitch look to it. So if you want, you can go ahead and change out what loom you're using to have more of an even number. But again, because this has an odd number, we won't have, we'll end up with two knit stitches next to each other, which will be okay. I don't, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. Now again, making sure you have your tail out of the way here. We're still not going to take that off yet. I want to do a couple more rows before. Actually, I think we can take it off. We've already locked this in pretty good. So go ahead and remove it from your peg. Gently pull to get the slip knot out of it, or you can leave the slip knot in, and then go in, and you want it to go on the inside of the loom. If you've ever seen me do this pearl stitch before, you want those two strands to come on this side. And we'll eventually later be pulling this to close off the loom. But we're going to do, like I said, the rib stitch, which is you knit a peg, then you pearl a peg. So we're going to go ahead and we'll, so you just simply, you wrap knit one peg, pearl the next. Knit the next one. Pearl the next. Now again, when you have the two strands, you really want to make sure your loop is all as one, so you can take it off and put it back on the peg. So again, then we knit. 
So again, it's just alternating the knitting and the purling. Now, I'm, I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to complete this knit row or knitting then purling for this many rows. So go ahead and do that. And again, remember that we're going to be ending with two knits because this is an odd numbered peg loom. After completing the 10 rows, again, that included finishing up the row we had started before, we, before I went off camera. Again, after completing the 10 rows, we're ready to pull this close. I always find this part to be the coolest part of the drawstring cast off. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're just going to simply take the yarn we started out with, and we're just going to gently pull it. And because it's two different kinds of yarn, again, keep an eye on that. You just want to gently pull. You never want to feel like you're pulling too tight because you could mess it up. If it feels like it's pulling too tight, you simply add in a few more rows and they'll give you the slack that you need. <coughs> so we're just going to keep pulling and we're going to get as closed off as we can going around. <coughs> you see, it's getting this part in here as closed off as we can. If you don't feel like it can close off, like I said, I'm not going to do it perfectly because now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to tie, work our yard, yarn back and forth in here. Let me zoom in so you can see. And we're going to close it off. And because we're working with two strands, we can actually use this to our advantage this time. And we're going to grab a crochet hook. And we're going to go ahead and find a different part that we can take. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to separate the two that we were working with. And we're going to bring this scrubby yarn to an opposite side by putting our crochet hook through a loop anywhere you can find it. That's what I usually tell people. Pull it through and then tie it to the cotton yarn. Now take our cotton yarn, come over and find the nearby loop. Bring it through. Now go ahead and <coughs> excuse me, take our scrubby yarn and find another nearby loop. Bring it through again. I'll take these two and tie them together. Give them another tie. And what you can also do is you can check to see how closed it off by pulling it up. Is that it's okay there's a little hole left, but you can see we got it pretty well closed off pretty easily. Again, you can tie it off again. If you want to, you can go ahead and trim this down, leaving yourself a little bit of a tail. And then go ahead, if you want now with lesser yarn, just go ahead and give it a few more knots. And from here, you have a choice of kind of weaving it in. Again, this is going to be the inside of the scrubby. This is going to be the outside of the scrubby after we've done our 10 rows. So we got a nice little texture. So you can go ahead if you want, and you can work and hide it in the loops on the inside. You can hide the extra yarn just by kind of going to some loops and bringing that working yarn in. And the same with the scrubby yarn. Just kind of hiding it in the project as much as you now can. Now the next part we got to do is we got to work a few more stitches, but this time I want to switch it to the chunky braid stitch, which is a three over one stitch. And the reason I'm doing this is so that on one side of the scrubby we'll have this kind of texture, and then by switching up the stitch before we take this off, we'll have another spot that will give you a little different texture for when you are ready to actually scrub um, your dishes and that. But you're gonna, for the chunky stitch, remember we have to go around and wrap the pe pegs so that there are four loops on so that we can take the bottom three over the top one. And it's important to also remember that when you get to that part where you're taking the three over one, you can work it one peg at a time. So again, you would go ahead and you would wrap it so that it would have that much time on there or much space. So I'll show you that in one second. Again, remember to do the chunky, excuse me, <coughs> chunky braid stitch. What we need to do is wrap all the pegs 
So if they have three loops on them again, it's going to be a little trickier because you've got two strands of yarn you're working at once. <coughs> so go ahead and rewrap it again. Now I have to go around one more time because again we need to have the ability to take the bottom three over the top one. So we're going to push these down out of our way as we work around for the next time. Now as we come back through because we got the two strands and because it's very like two different kinds of yarns we're using I would recommend doing the chunky braid stitch one peg at a time and again for that, I'm going to zoom in a little closer we're going to take all these bottom loops right here over top of the loop that we're wrapping right now, the peg that we're wrapping so all of these three bottom ones have to go over the top I'm going to just go off camera and do that real quick. Okay. Alright, sorry about that. It's just that sometimes my angle is a little different to actually do it. Um, and again, keep an eye on how you're wrapping as well, because that will make it harder for those to, to go over. But again, now we have the three sets down here, and we have the one set up here. We're going to take all those bottom ones and go over, oops, excuse me, go over the top one. So again, you know, wrap the next peg, and because we have those loops, I'm going to take all the bottom ones over the top. And continue doing this chunky braid stick, stitch until you hit that many rows. After doing the two rows of the chunky stitch, now again, I know it was tight to probably knit over, but that's just going to help give us a little bit of like, more of a definition when we get ready to take this off. So again, this is how it looks on this side. <coughs> And we need to do a few more rows before we can actually take this off. And what we're going to do for the rest of it is we're actually going to do the, <coughs> excuse me, the tight stitch, which is actually where you wrap the pegs around, and then you take the bottom one over the top two. So it's similar to what we did, but just kind of in the reverse. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to rewrap your yarn so that you have, and again, you're going to work it one peg at a time when you go back around but you're going to wrap it. Now as we get ready to come back around again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the tight stitch. We're going to work this peg by peg <coughs> just because it's easier when you've got more yarn that you're working with at a time. So again, this time <coughs> we're doing what I call the tight stitch which is called that. It is actually where you take the bottom set of loop over the top two. And we're actually going to continue this one until we get ready to cast it off. So the top or the bottom over the top two. When you go back around make sure you separate so that you get the two strands at the bottom, two strands at the top. So again, tight stitch is just simply wrap around with the both strands and take this bottom loop over the top two. And then go to the next. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue doing the tight stitch again. The stitch that's called this right here. I just like to call it the tight stitch because of the look I get when I'm done with it um, for the yarn. So we'll go ahead and continue that and continue it for this many rows right here. And then when we come back, we'll do a couple final steps before we actually take it off. After doing just three rows of the tight stitch, we're almost ready to take this off. We just now, what makes it easier for the process of taking it off is to go ahead and do a couple rows of e wrap knit. So that, that way we can take these bottom two loops we left, have left over over the top so that we're only left with one loop on each peg. So what you're going to do <coughs> is simply, you know, wrap your pegs. This time taking the bottom two loops that we got right here 
up and over. Now it may be a little tight as it was doing a tight stitch. I notice this yarn, I don't think, I think with cotton yarn I gotta give it a little more slack when I do it. So just go ahead and do <coughs> three rows of e wrap knit just so that you end up having just a single loop on each peg. And again, the first time around, you're going to be taking both these loops <coughs> up and over the top loop. So go ahead, do three rows of e wrap knit, and then we'll be ready to cast off. After doing the three rows of e wrap knit, we're ready to take this off the loom. We're going to actually bind it off as if we were doing a hat. <coughs> this will allow us to have two layers of the yarn for when we're scrubbing the distance. <coughs> so in order to do that, we're going to cut our tail here, leaving about five to seven inches. Again, you like to have extra room. Now what I'm going to do is instead of using both strands at once, I'm going to get rid of my disc scrubby yarn and only use my cotton yarn to make this a little easier going around. And again, how much yarn you're going to need, what usually you can do is sometimes we wrap the yarn around the loom a couple times to get an idea of how much loom, or yarn you're going to need to use. So sometimes people do that. So you can try that method or I would just say always cut yourself more yarn than you think you're going to need. But we'll do, you'll wrap the loom, loom with the yarn of two or three times and that should give you a good amount that you need. Again, it's always better to have enough yarn, like too much of it, and then not, then not enough, excuse me. Now what we got to do is we got to take our yarn that we're using to cast off and we're going to work it through these loops. So we're going to put it off to the side. Now if you want, again, because we got our little nifty knitted with a knob, you can slip knot the end of your yarn that you're going to use. Oops. And you can place it on that peg while you're working so that it doesn't come loose. And then keep an eye on these other ones so that they don't become loose as well. You want these kind of to go on the opposite side, on the end side here. Now all you're going to do is you're going to work this yarn through each of these loops all the way through. So you go in, you want to grab that yarn, and so just like you're doing a hat. And pull it all the way through. Go to the next. Reach down in, grab that yarn, pull it all the way through. Now when you get a few pegs done, you can go back and gently take the loops off the pegs to give yourself a little more slack as you're going around. and move on to the next. Be careful how you're pulling through. You don't want to lose the yarn you already have, but you want to gently pull it all the way through. And again, this is just like what we sometimes do for taking a hat off. So go ahead and keep working this until you get to the last couple pegs. And again, remember after doing a couple, you can go ahead and just remove the loops off, which will give you some less tension as you're working your way around. So again, continue this until you get close to being an end, and we'll come back and we'll do the last little bit. We're on our last two little pegs here. Our last two little pegs. We're going to lift off the last two loops from going through. We're also going to take this one off of our little knob that we have, gently pull it all the way through, put on that. And now we're going to do the magic of we're going to take these strands and we're going to close off the top part. So we're just going to pull until we have pulling each of the looms or each of the yarns, sorry, or sorry, I'm looking for the other one here red one. You're just going to pull them to tighten and close off this part. The white one seems to work really well. So we're going to tighten that off so it gets a nice flat. 
Okay, and before I even start, I'm going to trim this extra yarn down because we don't need all this when we're tying it off. So trim that down so we have a little less to work with when we have to use our crochet hook. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the drawstring cast on that we did at the beginning. We're going to go in here as best we can and we're going to close off this knot. It's going to be okay if there's a little hole, like I always say, but you're going to want to close it off a little bit. So go over to the opposite side, go through a loop, grab one of those tails we had left over or two, pull them through, and then tie it to the other two. Again, this is just to close it off. Give it a snug tongue here. Tie it one more time. And then if you want to, you can rotate it and go to another side. If you see that, hey, it's not closed off, I want one more over here just to be safe, you can go ahead, loop it through, grab a couple of loops, pull that through, find your others, put them through another side. And with this kind of yarn, it's kind of in your favor because you really can't tell where you're going because it's got that fuzziness to it. And then go ahead and retie it off. couple times. And that should get you a pretty secure knot. And again, you can check and see. Now what I did is this one obviously is big. If you go back up here, you can see compared to my hand, it's a very big scrubby. I wanted it to be bigger than ones I've seen because I know when I'm doing dishes, I want this to really be able to be in my hands scrubbing whatever I'm cleaning. And I also figured it's a little bigger size. would be good for the loomers that we have that are male loomers that actually want to make things on a loom for themselves. This is more designed for a slightly bigger hand if they need to be. It's not so dainty and it's got that thickness you want because of doing the drawstring. And what's good too, if you need it to, you can pull it apart if you want. If you don't want it to be able to do this, just simply go ahead and bring one of the yarn from here. Work your crochet hook through the whole project. Bring it through. Again, this is if you don't want it to be able to open. Okay, I'm going to bring that through and we'll have it on this side and then we'll just go ahead and we'll do what we did earlier and we'll just find loops and we'll tie this string. We'll, we'll separate the strands if you got more than one but you're just going to end up tying it through here. So that is kind of helping to tie the ends of the middle together. If you don't want to use the strands there you can easily use extra yarn you have on hand. So see if we tie it. Now I can't pull it apart because I knotted something on the other side. So that's the way you can do it if you don't want it to be poofy open. You can bring a couple of strands on the other side and it won't come apart as much. And again with doing the different stitches we just, you know, it gives us some nice texture. We got the thickness we want. And it might be seem a little bulky at first but when you're cleaning dishes you want something sturdy. So again with all these extra stragglers you can hide them in the project if you want. Let's see. Or after you've kind of done enough where you've tied them up, you're like, okay, this is not going to come apart. Then you can just trim them down to as small as you want um, because they're not going to be in your way. If the stragglers are, you know, not too short, they're not going to hurt, especially with this yarn because it'll just be extra scrubbing power. So I'll just come through here, and I'm just going to tie this off couple times and then just trim it down a little bit and because of the yarn you can't even really notice why I trimmed it you do the same on the other side if there's two or one you just hide it in there give it a tie and then give it a snip. And there you go. A cute little dish scrubby. I hope you like it and make sure if you haven't already to click the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more projects and don't hesitate to comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day everyone.